Okay, so uh, this is um, 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 my background and some of the um, achievements uh, here. Um, so I've been um, at the UCF since uh, 2012, uh, went through the uh, assistant professor, associate professor, and now I am a professor. Um, I was uh, educated in uh, US, India, and then also uh, in Italy. Um, at UCF, uh, I taught um, several um, undergraduate classes and uh, graduate classes. So I've taught seven different uh, uh, classes um, uh, while my, uh, in a, mostly in a, a MAE. Um, so um, some of the achievements include, uh, uh, we have been um, fortunate to receive several um, early career awards and um, recognition from um, uh, international uh, organizations. Um, so DARPA Young Faculty Award and uh, DARPA uh, Directors Fellowship and DITRAD uh, YIP um, and then the ACS DNI Award. And so far, um, we have brought in funding uh, more than 19 million as our share and um, participated in um, uh, greater than 32 million um, with um, co-PI and PI single route. Um, I have graduated 18 PhD students and uh, six of them are in um, academia, eight are in industry and um, um, several uh, master students. Most of the master students continued for PhD. Um, currently I have uh, uh, 25 PhD students uh, working with me and we have also mentored uh, uh, several postdocs with um, um, other co-PIs also included. Um, and I have mentored a research faculty. Um, so uh, Anthony, Dr. Anthony Tarasiano, he is now with the Boeing um, uh, in Merit Thailand. We have published around 117 journal papers and uh, greater than 100 have been at UCF um, and more than 300 conference articles. So uh, out of these 170 journal papers, um, more than 70 journal papers are written by my uh, students as um, uh, co-authors and some of the publications in um, PNAS and science uh, prestigious journals. Please go to the next slide. Um, we also men been fortunate uh, to mentor several graduate students, um, and some of them have gone to win um, NSF um, graduate research fellowships. So the highlighted ones are currently at UCF. Um, some of them have graduated, um, and uh, we have been featured uh, in uh, in a documentary titled uh, "Combustion Man," um, which is. Um, um, uh, created by UN, and it, this is available on iTunes, and uh, it's also on the IMDb database. Uh, we um, <clears throat> uh, we have uh, also received uh, um, several um, awards uh, within UCF and uh, outside. You know, I say we because uh, all of these achievements have been possible uh, with the help of my team, uh, my students, and collaborators, and so on. Um, please go to the next slide. Um, we have been able to uh, diversify our efforts. Uh, that's because uh, I focus on uh, fundamental and applied efforts uh, in mostly in the high temperature reacting environment. So when you look at uh, a high temperature environment, so whatever is happening inside your car engine, jet engines, rockets, um, explosions, um, fire, um, they all have one thing in common where processes are happening extremely fast, like microsecond uh, to millisecond kind of time scale. So that is um, one millionth of a second and well, you know, one thousandth of a second kind of time scales. You know, you have um, um, sp chemical species being converted and as a result, they release energy and that energy is being used for um, constructive purposes and destruct destructive purposes. So constructive purposes would include uh, powering vehicles, uh, destructive purposes will include, uh, you know, explosions and, you know, detonations and so on, right? And so we have facilities that can study this and we also make uh, sensors that can um, study this kind of phenomena. And so, um, so connecting all of these different fields is that fundamental science behind it. Please go to the next slide. And we also do uh, field measurements. So we have... Uh, um, partners at the Air Force Research Lab, Industry, Aerojet Rocket, and GE uh, Navy Research Lab. And they are doing similar uh, uh, testing and uh, experiments, and they rely on us to um, provide them 
uh, what is seen in this um, uh, kind of environment. So as an example, you know, there's a field experiment and, you know, we bring our sensors there, make measurements. Now, when you do such an effort, it's not just the fundamental science behind developing that uh, such sensors, but also there's a lot of engineering that go beyond, you know, uh, behind making uh, such a field measurement possible. When you are in your lab, at the comfort of the air conditioning and the you know nice optical table, you can do a lot of great things. But you know when you're out in the field in somebody else's place, that's very very difficult, right? So even if you like, let's say, uh, need an additional screw or um, nut and bolt, you know that's not um, available immediately. So you have to like plan for all kinds of contingencies when you do such a campaign. And then you know before we go to a field place, we also make um, um, validation experiments using our facilities on campus. Let's go to the next slide. <clears throat> so what are these facilities, right? So mainly, you know, we work with the shock tubes. Um, so these shock tubes uh, allow us to create that high temperature, high pressure environment. So I have multiple facilities uh, on campus. So a couple of them are shown here. One is an MSV building and one is in the off campus building called Hyperstar. And we can access a range of pressures and temperatures and uh, species uh, with these facilities. And so that allow us to be, these facilities are not like um, you know, these are custom built, designed by um, students and me, um, and these are not like facilities that you can just buy, you know, it requires like years of knowledge and effort to um, uh, construct them. And so some of our facilities are world class, you know, it's very unique. Of course, every facility has its own um, advantages and uh, disadvantages, but, uh, you know, we have some unique capabilities that allow uh, our sponsors and, uh, you know, we are able to get to um, that extreme high pressure and then also when it comes to uh, hypersonics we are able to create extremely high Mach number um, which is uh, um, how fast you are going with respect to the speed of sound so we are able to go up to like Mach 15 and these facilities are also used to create um, conditions for our um, sensor validation so you know you have an engine rocket engine inside there it's high temperature high pressure so if you have to have a sensor that can measure that, you need to know that your sensor can really um, measure it in-house, in a, in a non-environment. So these facilities allow us to do that. Let's go to the next slide. So uh, uh, as a result, you know, we've been fortunate to get several uh, industry and federal sponsors. So I think uh, we have funding from every federal agency except uh, NIH. And so, um, and I'll be going through some of these uh, um, uh, in my um, slide. And then also um, we have been fortunate to get funding from industry and uh, nonprofit and other agencies um, uh, like FSTC, uh, LCRI, um, Southwest Research Institute and so on. Um, please go to the next slide. So I'll go through some examples. So this is the latest, uh, um, this is just got announced um, um, two days ago. Um, we are part of a, a big consortium led by University of Florida. And this is a $25 million five years effort. And here uh, the application is uh, for NNSA in terms of nuclear defense and forensics. So we'll be, um, um, uh, of course, it's a big effort. And so specifically um, uh, what we'll be focusing on are looking at um, um, the fireballs created by nuclear explosion. Of course, you know, we don't study actual nuclear materials, but that high temperature environment created after a nuclear, nuclear explosion, those are several aspects of that. You know, you can break down that into um, fundamental problems and you can study using our facilities um, such as the shock tubes. And getting um, accurate predictions of those signatures will help um, NNSA uh, identify if an enemy has uh, detonated something or, or even protect against, uh, um, um, you know, an enemy uh, attack uh, and so on. So we are looking at this effort and this is just going to start soon. And uh, other part of the effort is uh, training um, uh, students and workforce for um, NNSA efforts, uh, mainly the NNSA labs. Go to the next slide. Um, as you know, um, Professor Kapat and I are uh, leading this project uh, on ammonia powered uh, jet engine. So this is um, an effort that started last year. Um, this is a revolutionary project where um, right now our jet engines work on jet fuels and we want to move um, towards um, uh, burning ammonia hydrogen, um, which does not have any carbon. Um, so aviation is the 
most difficult place to decarbonize because uh, anything that flies you know safety is at most important you cannot you know on on the ground uh, in power generation in your car you can always add things uh, or change things and that's not going to affect uh, much in terms of safety but uh, anything that flies with people um, right you have to be really really sure that the technology is mature and uh, safe and so um that's why nasa is investing heavily into this effort and not um, you know that's why it's a 10 million dollar five years effort to kind of uh, do the risk reduction um uh, in terms of developing this technology and we are working with the ge and boeing on this effort please go to the next slide so essentially our lab is responsible for um, um uh, designing this combustion process where ammonia hydrogen mixtures will be converted into um products and so such an engine concept does not exist currently and and uh, you cannot make an engine without an engine maker um, um as a partner and you cannot make an uh, an engine without a airplane maker uh, as a partner so that's why we have boeing and um, ge and we also have other partners in this effort including um, uh, orlando international airport airport and uh, supply chain partners so those are important because you could have the best airplane concept uh, in the world but uh, you know if that airplane concept and the fuel combination cannot be implemented in an airport then you know it's pretty much useless so you have to have all the stakeholders to make sure that um, um, you know whatever solution that you're coming up um, is uh, practically feasible please go to the next slide um, this is a, a revolutionary propulsion concept where you are making use of a detonation um, for um, high efficiency propulsion and this effort uh, has been sponsored by Air Force R, uh, ONR, GE and uh, um, Aerojet Rocketdyne and um, some uh, Department of Energy. Um, so this is um, 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 a very uh, exciting project and so I have uh, my students traveling to GE's location next week and they'll be there for three months um, making measurements um, in a detonation engine. Um, and uh, this this effort um, um, uh, is very prestigious, and actually, um, we we have a lot of responsibilities, um, and they are counting on our measurements to you know advance this technology. So we kind of measure uh, you know whether this technology has that efficiency that they claim, uh, or is you know theoretically uh, claimed, right? So uh, without measurements, you know, you don't know whether the theory is right. So we are going to make the measurements and um and and see what happens let's go to the next one uh this is another effort in the hypersonics area um so um uh, as you know hypersonics is a big um, um uh, effort within uh, dod and uh, internationally right now so we are working with the uh, navy labs and um, 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 companies in this area to develop um, um, high speed um, uh, missiles um, um, for um, government applications. So again, uh, our effort is, um, um, you know, going to be a very small part of that overall effort. And so um, some of these are, um, um, I've led to my students uh, getting internships um, uh, in Navy labs and uh, um, also, um, um, you know, um, students also like that kind of engagement and Navy labs like that engagement because then they can hire them um, uh, in the future. Please go to the next slide. Uh, this is another uh, effort for DOD. Um, I, you know, of course, uh, uh, this is related to missile defense. So I'm not showing a lot of the details um, of what we do. Um, some of those are uh, controlled, so I cannot talk in this forum. Um, essentially, you know, when an enemy missile is coming towards you, as you gotta identify what kind of missile is that. Um, and how to defend it, right? So uh, when um, uh, that's a very uh, intense task and you rely on accurate uh, models to uh, achieve the task. And so we um, um, uh, we work with MDA. Um, please go to the next slide. And, uh, you know, we look at uh, the, uh, the exhaust uh, from a rocket. So you can see on the right side here, um, that is a SpaceX SpaceX rocket on the uh, at sea level, and that is uh, you know you can see the exhaust pattern, right? And the second figure on the right is space the same SpaceX rocket when it is at twenty three 
um, kilometers altitude. And you can see that the exhaust pattern is different. So essentially, you know, looking at the exhaust pattern, you can identify a lot of things about that um, um, particular rocket. And when by making measurements relevant to that um, flow field, you can also identify what type of uh, uh, rocket or missile it is. And so we use our facilities to provide that knowledge for um, um, Army and MDA, and we have industry partners also involved. And we've been also fortunate to get a project on the uh, uh, University Consortium for Applied Hypersonics in this area, uh, Yuka, and all of these projects are um, highly controlled and uh, uh, only uh, US citizen people can work on the project. I think I'm running out of time, um, so I'll quickly go through. Um, yeah, you have a, a couple of minutes, so we are yeah. getting close to the one o'clock, right? And so, um, Please go to the, um, you know, this effort is the one that I mentioned that we did for uh, DITRA, and this has been featured in a UN documentary. And this project uh, is kind of winding up and the uh, essentially um, um, we created data and they use those data to create models. And that models are right now used by DOD in their simulations. You know, how do you, um, um, uh, de defend against weapons of mass destruction. That's the focus of this uh, project. And so this started as a young investigator program and uh, it's coming to an end. Um, please go to the, um, uh, you can skip all of this. And I guess in the interest of time, I'll go to, um, uh, yeah, this one. So um, uh, one more slide back. Um, we have been focusing a uh, lot of effort in terms of uh, renewables and hydrogen. Um, so hydrogen gas turbines, you know, you, you hear a lot of emphasis from the federal government and industry on developing hydrogen as a fuel for uh, uh, power generation and fuel for uh, uh, propulsion and so on. So hydrogen doesn't have any carbon, but hydrogen is extremely difficult to deal with. You know, it's a very simple molecule, um, easy to leak, easy to, uh, you know, its behavior is completely different from rest of the uh, fuels and chemicals out there. So there's a lot of fundamental knowledge that is needed to make a hydrogen um, technologies a reality. And so we are looking at from um, different angles and for different uh, applications, power generation, propulsion, um, safety, and so on. And we have been partnered with the uh, industry like Mitsubishi, um, GE, um, DOE, and um, and so on. Um, so in the interest of time, I'll go to the last slide. So, and of course, you know, we are grateful to the uh, chair, dean, um, associate deans, and uh, um, VP of research and uh, staff at the uh, Office of Research for, um, 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 you know, helping us. And uh, this is a team effort and uh, I'm uh, very grateful for my uh, students and postdocs. These are some of the pictures from our um, outings. Um, the one on the right is from uh, last week at uh, AIWA meeting in um, um, uh, DC. So thank you and I'll take any questions.